Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your favorite blockhead this is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and mma into one heck of an amazing podcast you can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at your favorite blockhead.com do me a huge favor and listen to brian's show you'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend now as i said let's get into today's topic so I don't know what happened, but it's gotten super hot in the last 24 hours. It's almost like we live in California or something. <laughs> the weather's so weird because it was super freezing cold for days and days and days. I mean, there was rain, there was everything. And then all of a sudden, like within an afternoon, it goes from being super high winds to 80, 90 degrees. I, I don't understand. Yeah, it's not great. My, uh, my so, internal thermometer does not approve of this. <laughs> so we have a friend here with us today. Why don't you, do you want to say who it is or shall I say who it is? It's all you, man. It's all you. Okay. We have uh, Nicole Coleman here today. Uh, Nicole, welcome to the Nightly Rant. Hi. It's so great to be here with you too. <laughs> we're excited you're here. Oh, we're, we're you're glad we're here. Okay. All right. Um, so why don't you tell us about yourself, Nicole? You do understand you're saying that to a woman. Okay. I'll try to keep it short <laughs> <laughs> and I'll try to be like your organ, keep it to the point because you got to understand as a woman, we work from a diffused way of thinking. That's why we go from one tangent to another, to another, to another, but I'm just going to try to be very business, keep it to the point. So first of all, I'm thrilled to be here. I think you guys have an awesome, awesome, special show. It's a privilege in the manner of which it's set up, because it's like intimate when you get to dive in to someone's private conversation. It's very special. Real quick, my name is Nicole Coleman. You can just say I'm a bodybuilder by day and Hayoka empath by night. Now, I'm, I'm a three title holder in three different sports, swimming, gymnastics, bodybuilding. Actually, the, the biggest competition was in LA. I'm Israeli, French, and Russian. I'm an author, and I'm an inspired speaker. And I also have clients that I take on where I do something called connective tissue stretching. My biggest clients are golfers. Actually, one of my clients, Stephen Bebis, who brought Golf Town to Canada, I don't know if it's in the States, he was <laughs> the biggest one who just gave me such great feedback about this connective tissue stretching that eliminated all his injuries and wanted actually to fund me to do a studio to just do that. But I have a lot of creative talents and it all kind of leads to this root word, Hayoka empath. What is a Hayoka empath really quick? All right. A Hayoka empath, I'm like a mirror. So I'm like your own private mirror, not quite like the Wicked Witch of the West, because he's like, he really sounds like he's on Prozac. <laughs> not like him. Okay. Not like him. But imagine having your own private mirror where you're like, why am I so fucked in my life? And I actually let you know, because I can see the dark spots that nobody can see. But once I say it, it resonates and you're, you break free. That's why a lot of clients that I have, they've come from shrinks, they've come from doctors, and usually they tend to put you in a template. They put you in a category. Oh, Sue, abusive father, drunk mother, that funnels you down to this, this, this. But I'm very blessed with this gift, as I've noticed over the years more and more. And I, I never even knew what it was until like recently. I hated when people said, you're psychic or psychic. Let's go get a lottery. Okay, when do I get my husband? I'm like, I don't do that. I don't do future. Just if you have an issue, I can get it for you. I'm like a psychic psychologist. So, but that's not the golden gem. The golden gem is I can see where you're great. I can see hidden talents that you always felt like doing something, doing something, but no one's watered it. It's so thirsty. All it needs is, is the key to open up the chest. Like, what is that? Pandora's box of this talent that just comes out. And I've said it to people, they've dropped their lives and they've gone after things and they've emailed me years later. Oh my God, I would have never been successful. If you didn't say this, you were my answered prayer. Oh my God, I prayed for you and things like that. So a Hayoka empath is just that. It's someone that's psychic and someone that can see inside 
and I'll say this very carefully, gets downloads of ancient knowledge that is within you, call it ancestral trauma bonds, um, karmic ties, which I can peer into and bring to your attention. See so, what I mean on tangents, Mike? Do you see what I mean by tangents? Tangents are okay. I go on them all we the love time. Them. I mean, you, oh, you've you yeah. heard our show. We talk in tangents all the time, so that's okay. It's also True. why it's called the nightly rant because we rant about things. But I, I had a question for you about that, though. I had read, you know, when 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 we first connected, you mentioned um, that you're an empath and you mentioned, you know, the Hayoka empath. And I, what I am kept coming up in my research is that – the anyone who has this ability has the ability to to show people their negative traits. Here's the, true. Here's the thing, and it also depends. And that's such a good question, Mike. The Hayoka empath is also called the sacred clown. Do you know why? No. Because they're humorous as fuck. That's my ace in my back pocket, burning a hole in my back pocket. So. <laughs> I love that little cat I just saw going by. Okay, so <laughs> when you are anchored, and this brings us to the topic that I'd love to bring as soon as we finish this intro, when you're anchored as a female in your divine femininity, you have an obligation, you have a mission, a function that I see in this world, and that is to elevate horn dog to man. Simply put, I don't know how else to put it. Now, when you have that kind of regal bearing inside and you have that kind of high, high standard, which, by the way, when you display to a man, men always want to live up to your standards. What happened with most women today, they don't have a standard. And we'll get into that in a bit. But Hayoka Impact that is grounded in who she is at the highest authenticity standard and ethics and integrity and this can be dangerous. You're right. A Hayoka empath can pierce and they can cripple a person. I won't do that. I won't do that because I'm too sensitive to their pain. And because when you really, really have something powerful, you don't squander it. It's like a billionaire does not show how rich he is. The people who have some senses of this, they want to show power. They may go down that route. Yes. Interesting. Well, you know, you made a comment and it, it kind of made me think of something I say all the time. You said turning horn dogs into men. And I always say that <laughs> when I'm on social media, yeah. I am embarrassed to be a man be, yeah. because of the way that most men act. Are we talk, and talking about dick pics? That so many or pics. just just oh. the comments, the comments that are made about, you know, women online. It, it gets under my skin and you know, I always say to, to, to Victoria, you know, how come I'm not that way? Like what, but you know, a lot of it is because I was raised, um, by just a single mom. And so that I had a mom, that was it. I didn't have a dad in my life. And so I don't think I learned a lot of the, uh, you know, bad male traits and she taught me to respect women and, you know, that sort of thing. But what I, what I'm interested in is I want you to tell us a, your your concept here that you've been talking about, um, about, you know, like how women don't have standards, for instance, because I, that's the first time I've heard someone put it that way um, and, not, and, not, and not sound sexist. That's the thing. Like a lot of times it just sounds sexist because they're picking on, uh, you know, some aspect of that woman's personality that maybe they shouldn't pick on. And instead, it doesn't sound like you're coming at it from that angle. So why don't you fill us in on that? Okay. I love how you sum up thing, put it in the net, the few words I said, sentences. I, I love how you do that. Thank you. You really helped me because I'm a, oh my God, that's so cute, you little puppy. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That he loves me. My, oh, this God, this is the see. CEO of the podcast now. Oh, this is Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to our living room. Yes. <laughs> Yogi. 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 Okay. So here's what I'd like to say. Everything's going in my mind really quick, flickering off and on. First of all, your mother is a very special woman, not because she's your mother, because she struggled like hell. You, whenever anybody struggles, they're humbled. It chisels them into a certain type of tool that can actually heal people. Now, because I'm an athlete and because the book that I wrote, may I say the title, it's a bit risque. Go for it. The Wisdom of the Penis, SOS Manual. Sorely needed. I'm just sorry. It's like friggin' sorely needed. Now, <laughs> I 
I wrote that book because as an athletic girl slash woman, hardcore career entrepreneur and all that, I noticed a trend. First of all, because it became a fitness error. First of all, every other girl is an entrepreneur. Every other girl is a fitness something. Fitness and entrepreneurship is a masculine energy. It means we all have to have balls there because it's run by logic, by competition, by drive, by being sacrificial, high, high end responsibility. What happens is when we, the women, don't leave our balls at the gym, at the court, or, or in the office, and we take it home to our guy, last we checked there, Mike, was a masculine energy. What happens is the two energies collide. So in order to just keep the peace, because opposite energies attract, the men become passive. So what happened when the women don't leave their balls and they come home, they steamroller their guys with all this assertive, aggressive, it forces the guys to be passive basically snips their dick and their whole initiative. And then not only that, then they bitch and complain. How come you don't take charge and protect me when someone looks out at me like out in the street? How come you don't make plans? How come I always do the plans? How come I have to initiate sex? How come I have to organize your whole life? Because when a woman is dominant in her masculine energy, a couple of things happen. She disconnects and from her feminine energy, which is passively magnetic, which is receptive, which is girly, which is self-care, which is seductive as fuck. And it's put on mute. So now we got a couple of problems. The big honcho women, the big successful one, and I've had clients and these are where they come from. Lawyers, doctors, judges. My big intellectual women will have the biggest problem with men. Why? Because as soon as there is a problem, they will rationalize because, again, feelings on mute, brain is going to overrule feelings, rationalize. They're going to think, well, okay, he's been drinking a lot. He's not pulling his weight. Okay, he's taking too much money and he's not getting a job. And I've handled worse in my life. Remember in college, I had to do, they will compare their worst case scenario and challenge themselves, as the mind will often do when you're stuck there to handle the situation. Disconnected from their feelings, they will no longer go to their gut and their feeling and say, oh my God, I'm unhappy. Uh, This is not good for me. I'm uncomfortable. And here's where a couple of dangers happen. With the women locked in their mind, that's why women today are like, I can't stop thinking 24-7. Did he want me? Didn't he want me? Does he want me? Oh my God, I can't stop thinking about their problem. They're carrying the conversation in their bed while they're doing the dishes, while they're having a shower. Oh, and these kind of women shower in 3.2 seconds. Bath, take up too much time. No longer efficient. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're trying to take a breath. Did you want to say something or let me go on my roll? Go ahead. I was going to say, clearly, Victoria is not one of those women. And that is what I'm going to say. (laughs) Just a second. No, she's laughing, but she has no idea how divine she is. I was going to say, if you're dealing with Victoria a lot, she is going to keep you in your masculine energy because as boisterous and as fun loving as she is, she has her softness intact. She doesn't, she doesn't iron out her softness. So it's hard as shit. And so what happens now with the women, and you guys can Google this, is now the statistics are such that, and we're talking about girls as early as 13, whenever they start having sex these days, it's a whole other topic. That's why I actually wrote the book. It's targeted towards young adult. It's actually a book about the value of love and the wisdom of restraint. But what happens now is that the female population is on anti-anxiety pills and antidepressant three times more than guys. Because they can't get out of their head. They can't stop their head from thinking because they're disconnected from their feelings because the media is making it look like having feelings being vulnerable is a weakness. So now the media is like, let's just show we're in charge. You need to let's just walk up to the guy and ask him out. So now I'm a female and I'm walking up to the guy and I'm like, hi, I'm so and so. Do you want to go out? Oh, my God, there's just party. Like maybe you can um, here. I'll let me ask you for your number. And, and here's what happens at that point. Our whole self-esteem issues now have to kick in because we feel the pressure of, will they call us? Will they not call us? We're walking up to a guy, vagina smudging in his face like we have the goods. Why are we doing all the work? I don't know about your sex ed class, but in mine, I don't ever remember the egg 
putting on her running shoes, running after 50 billion sperm. The sperm <laughs> went after the egg for a fucking good reason. Okay, I'm sorry. It just does. And so now I'm like, good job, G.I. Jody. You're wondering why he's such high maintenance. Maintenance, you set the precedent. You ran after him. When you start messing up with the architecture and the science of the body, that's what happens. So now girls are territorial. Territorial over a guy? And give me a fucking break. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So now she's going to be on his case. And he, because he's being worked so hard for, she now has to instill that effort. So now spells conjure potion, motions, anything to keep him. And what they don't realize is that girl has to keep asking herself, am I performing? Am I doing enough? Will he stay? Am I good enough? That is so far unplugged from the divine feminine energy. It is demoralizing to our spirit because we are here I had an amazing compliment of one of my clients. She says, oh, I love what you're doing. You're empowering women. And I'm like, no, I'm not empowering women. I am plugging women into themselves. Because it's one thing to have billions and millions of women plugged into me. But it's another thing to have those women plugged into themselves and light up the whole world. Because a divine feminine energy is a very strong energy. It's a creative energy. Now, the men are more talented at law, and attra- at law of attraction. Why? Because if the women are too in their head, it kicks in, am I worthy? And all the other guilt shit that's laid in there, rock hard, crudded stuff. And now the receptive energy that is a feminine energy, that's law of attraction. It's harder for a girl. I'm speechless because I've asked myself for nine years. <laughs> why 20-something men are disgusting. (laughs) And I feel like you're explaining it. And you know what? So let me take the blame off the men for a minute. Because, (laughs) Because with the media encouraging girls, making them think that in order to show we're confident, we need to do the work, that disconnects us from the gem that we are. And so these women are running after guys, which makes a guy passive. And I say to the guy, you're waiting for the girl to come and approach you. Dude, you got a penis that points for a reason. Go get the friggin' girl. Because this is going to snip your ability to initiate. Because do you know, and I'm sure Mike knows this, when you can handle the slippery slopes of a female mind, you can handle anything that is tangible in 3D in the world. Because a girl's mind, how to handle her when she's pissed, what to do. Oh, and don't ever say the R word, like relax or calm down. And don't even try to friggin' touch us when we're pissed off because we're like a volcano with boobs. Like seriously, don't touch our shoulder, our back, our knee and our wrist, unless you want a nub for a wrist. You need to just say, talk to me, talk to me. And we need to just take it all out because our words are attached to feelings. Because see, and here's the thing that I want to address what Victoria said. That's such a good reason. The men are confused because now a guy doesn't know when I go take a hot girl out on a date, do I open the car door or is she going to think that I think she's weak because she's like so boss at her business. She killed the 10K. She's a martial arts expert. Hell, she trains five days a week. She could even hurt me. Meanwhile, that girl is looking at him going, Why are you so slow? So guys are confused. I've had guys come to me. I don't even know if I'm supposed to get up for a nun and give her my bus seat because we are being projected upon to go and do. Let the guys do because that reinforces our value to them. It's not just about letting them feel useful. And you've got to understand The horror of this, Michael, the horror, and this answers the asshole type guys. Most of the guys are, because of this aggressiveness and the girls acting out in this predominantly masculine energy nonstop, it makes the guys that are solid and true blue timid. They back the fuck off. They don't even want to say, hi, you've got a nice smile. They're afraid they'll offend you. What the hell does that do? It parts the seas open for all the sharks narcissistics hello manipulators how low assholes hello nice to meet you that's what it does so the good guys 
are now being demasculized because we're strapping on their balls psychologically in every which way. And these other broken men with many missing pieces that are energy vampires because they've got holes. So it's it's not that they love you. It's that they need you. They need you for a fix. And what happens is that starts to degrade a good woman because, again, her feelings are not priority. Her mind is. She's going to challenge herself to put up with the dick. And here's the reason why she'll get a disease. Estrogen is a feeling hormone. When we don't honor it, it does not honor us. And it says, you're not listening to me. Forget the energy you usually have. Forget the sleep. Oh, and I'm going to throw in frazzled just for fun. Because you ignore me, I will ignore and desert you. You can live in your fucking brain. This is why us girls, being unhappy is not an option, which means being in a job that that is hurting your emotions will create a disease. One of the other things I do is as a Heoka empath, and some people already know about this, every single injury or health ailment is basically a feeling that produces an energy that gets replicated over time and manifests as a disease. A lot of mothers come to me and before they even give me their ailment, I'm like, let me guess, thyroid issue. Yes, how did you know? Because the sentence that is connected to the feeling that causes a thyroid thyroid ailment is, when is it ever going to be my turn? Oh my God, I keep putting my life off because I want to be there for my family. I want to be there for my husband. I want to be there for my kids. I want to be for my dog. I want to be there for the ant on the road. Oh my God. Okay. I guess I just got to wait. When they do that, they create the disease of thyroid because thyroid covers the throat chakra. You're not speaking up for yourself. So as a woman, it folds on you. Every single, from a pimple to a hemorrhoid, those are emotional thought patterns. That's extremely interesting to me as a man, because I mean, honestly, I don't think a man can ever completely understand a woman. And I honestly don't think a woman can ever completely understand a man. No, but, but, but like what, like, you know, Victoria and I've been together. What have we been together now? Seven years. And does your uh, wife let you hold the door open for her? (laughs) Well, the key, the key, I think, to our success is um, I am more concerned about um, doing things for her and not what she can do for me and vice versa. And so because of that, we just naturally gravitate towards um, taking care of each other in a different way than other relationships that I've been in. And there's no like gender role that matters here. I mean, we just help each other. Like if I'm not feeling good, she takes care of me. If she's not feeling good, I take care of her. There's no question about it. There's no, nobody has to make a request. It's just done, you know? You know and why it's just done, Mike? Why? Because you're not part of the trend of equality. I'll tell you why. Because equality in the workplace, yes. Equality in everywhere else, yes. That shouldn't be called feminism. It should be called humanism. When yeah. they put in feminism, they isolated the fucking women. And now, just by default, guys are dicks. So when that overlapped to the romantic arena that we ruled equality, why are we being fucking demoted to equality? Because <laughs> equality is fucking parallel. It's two soldiers. It's evening out the playing field. Why the hell would you want to even out a woman's hills and valleys. That's why she is there to create the hills and valleys. When there is a relationship that has equilibrium is what you're talking about. It is a fit. You know, like there's one guy, one girl, and we have two separate parts that are different and they fit together very well. It's not like the guy has a dick that's in the shape of a staircase and we have to like maneuver it and (laughs) shape it and twist it to make it fit. It like fits. So. Why, why is the emotional communication so jarring? And it's jarring because this whole equality thing, first of all, it's not equality. Women are doing more work because they've taken over the masculine role. So they're chasing, they're doing, and they're doing more to keep. And all those women are going to be trapped in there, especially those susceptible by daddy issues, because women who never had a father there or women who were snubbed by their father or had to work hard to get their father, 
will either put a lot of protection on with weight because their heart is extra sensitive or abuse or whatever. But the other thing, tail sign is they understand working hard is love. They don't even have the muscle of being receptive, which means they don't have the muscle for law of attraction to accept ease in their life and opportunities, which means when someone wants to help, they'll be like, no, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. You two have you without even knowing it. You've extracted yourself from all the what, what all the piranhas in the in in the waters today that are eating up each other in not a yummy way. And it's just it's just chopping away what they've done is they they've swapped roles. So the guys are now getting softer. They're going more to pot and alcohol because a guy is meant to be inserted into his logic and his grounding. He needs to have his balls intact. He needs to know he's the man. He knows he needs to know he's of value and he's respected and he's honored. And the woman needs to know that she can be soft. And when she cries, it's not a sin. It's I am strong enough to be naked. All my lawyer women, doctor women, the reason why they're having problem, they can't be vulnerable it, they and I said to one lawyer, and believe me, she's a real hard hard nut to crack. She says, "Of course I'll listen to you." I said, "Listen, you're strong. Of course I am, Nicole." I said, "But you're not strong. You're actually weak. Because if you were strong, you would tell your man right now you're not feeling happy." Yeah, but Nicole, I'm sure I can. I go, no. But why don't you just tell him I'm not feeling happy? That's a weakness. If a woman cannot. Say freely how she feels. Biggest cover up deceptive message the media is giving to us indirectly by making us go to do, instilling in our mind that we are not confident. Instead of enhancing our femininity, instead of putting a spotlight on how we inspire men, after you get all this glamour, Mike, after you build your empire, after you get this and get this and what's it for? For you, you plug it up your ass and what? You shit it all out. When you have a woman that shares, it's not that you're saying, look at me, I've proved who I am. It's kind of like you're building for something. And that's because, Mike, you know that in your woman, your inspiration lies. Because no woman can be with the man that she loves and the man look in her eyes and him not know the strength of what he's capable of until he looks in the eyes of the woman he loves. He will not know his full strength. No guy knows his power until he looks into the eyes of the woman he loves. So you see, when roll schmoles, let's say that, we'll swap roles and now it's equal. It's not fucking equal. Women are getting sicker. <laughs> They're getting sicker. They're getting tired. They're getting burnt out. And most of the university girls that I have that are clients are like, I don't even want a fucking boyfriend. Oh, my God, it's too much work. Why? Because you're working. And here's the thing. When you have women who are stuck in their mind because the media is guiding, it's hard enough that a woman is a career woman. That's a masculine energy. And it's hard enough that that woman's also probably athletic. That's a masculine energy. But now the media is saying, take charge, equality in romantic relationship. There is no romance in equality. That's not romantic. In fairy tales, there is a hero. There is a princess, empress, hello. But there is, equality is not a romantic vibe. Do you notice that opposite energies attract? Even in gender, same sex, you have a dominant and you have someone that's more vulnerable. You have a feminine energy and you have a masculine energy. You don't have equality. You have romance. Go with a go with a romance novel. Grab them by the hair and throw them down on the bed. Like oh fuck yeah! Don't get me hot. Now. But yeah, that's it, what women want to read. So that's yes. obviously what women want to have. Well, here's the thing. They talk about. <laughs> Girls don't want nice guys. This is why they like the bad boys. It's not that they like the bad boys. It's just that the good guys are pacified to death. And what that also means, they're too emotionalized. They become needy. They become clingers. They become looking to suck mother's nipple of knowledge and comfort. They have nothing of their own to come to offer. So they don't feel as valuable. So they feel doubtful. And not only do guys lose their whole sense of self they have nothing to offer but 
the bad boy thing, the reason why girls are pulled to him is because they have a thing called animal instincts. That's part of a man that's not domesticated. But when you have a noble knight, when you have a warrior, he's protective, he's honorable, he's delicate with something that is not strong like him. I don't care if the girl lifts 100,000 pounds. When she's with her man, he doesn't say, you can handle it, honey. You know, you like, you're like me. No, that's, that's where there's, I feel something amiss. And I think it's dangerous because it is getting guys over emotional and guys are losing their sense of value because when a girl's an emotional storm, she will vacillate from a masculine energy on her period to a feminine energy. Oh, I want my hero, my hunter, my king. I, I, I want that animal now because I'm in the feminine energy. And when we're going crazy, as Michael, you know that there are times when we can go, even though, Victoria, you seem like very level-headed. But when we go, when we go crazy, you are, so we have stormy seas. You are our lighthouse in the storm. You are that thick, thick, lighthouse, sturdy business in our storm. That's why you have that organ. It's a reminder. And so you can't be flopping around like a sick dick. Like that's just useless. Okay. That's useless. You know, as you're speaking, I'm thinking about like what I see in society today that, that bothers me. And like, for instance, there's a term that goes around a lot. Uh, if you watch different vloggers on YouTube, they talk about men as simps. And, and I, at first I thought, what the hell is a simp? Please doesn't tell make any, yeah. you know, and so I looked, so I looked into it a little bit and you know what, and literally it's just somebody, a guy who shows appreciation for another, for a woman. So, you know, you the guy me? that, no, hey. the guy that opens the car door, simp, the guy that tells a woman, oh, you're, you're, you look really pretty today, simp, but that's oh, a bad message to put out wow. there, both I for the guy that. and the girl, because because girls are going to complain that the guys aren't treating them right. And the guys are going to say, well, but you keep calling me a, a simp if I act the way you're asking me to act. And it's oh, it's insanity. Oh. And that's and that's what's going on in society today. I mean, this whole cancel culture and all that, it's all part of it. It's it's like you, you don't do things my way. So I'm going to call you names and I'm going to say this and that and the other thing about you. And it's it's really frustrating, especially as a man. It's frustrating. But I think that what people forget is that what society does to um, men and women, Poison. it ends up, it Poison. ends up poisoning relationships. Yeah. And, and like we talk all the time about like one of the topics we've had on the show many times is cheating. You know, what is cheating? And I mean, we, we went through this list one time, there was an article and <laughs> she's reading me this article and we went, we went through the list and we're like, you know, 90% of this stuff wouldn't be cheating if it was you and me. I mean, couples have to have a conversation about those sort of things, but that's the key, right? You got to have a conversation with each other. And if you're not speaking to one another as human beings, uh, you, you, why, why even be together? That that's really the key. And like, I, I always have this theory and it's, it's evolving, but it's being proven true. I think that people, each individual human is like a vial of chemicals of some sort. And then you run, when they, when, when they run into another human being, those chemicals that the other human being carries with them kind of mix together and they create a mentality for that time together. So we all have those friends that like, when we hear that Joe is going to be at the party, we know it's going to be a crazy party because he's always got that kind of energy. And I really think that some people like they get together in a relationship and they're not meant to be together. And the chemical um, mix shows it, it gets real volatile. And then there's people who are more meant to be together. It works for them when the chemicals are mixed together. You know, you don't get an explosion, you just get cooperation. And I, I find it really interesting that as a society, we went from, you know, chivalry all the way fast forward to through the whole feminist movement and everything. And now you got it to the point where there is a whole herd of people telling men, oh, you shouldn't pay her a compliment. You shouldn't do that. And so like as a father, I get scared. You know, my one son is married. My other son's only 17, but I work with him on that issue. I tell him, you know, if you want to compliment the, the girl you're with, compliment her. Don't, you know, don't let other people tell you that that's the wrong thing to do and don't let them call you names. But it's just really terrible when you're trying to raise children and society is continually changing 
how they want to handle things. And the reason I say it's dangerous is because then you take on top of it this cancel culture issue. And, you know, you got people, granted, I, I've said this over and over on this show, you got people back in the 70s that, you know, grabbing a woman's butt in a restaurant wasn't considered unacceptable. And today, if they find out you did that, suddenly you're canceled. And that's just wrong. Like you shouldn't, yeah, you should act appropriate for the time, but you shouldn't be held responsible for something you did 20 years ago that was considered acceptable at the time. So same thing here. These people are becoming simps because they compliment a woman, but yet way I was raised, you open the door for the woman. Um, if they look good, you tell them they look good. If they smell good, you tell them they smell good. I mean, you don't, you don't hold that stuff back, but yet what would happen if I was worried about someone like, what if I was worried about Victoria looking at me going, Oh, you're a simp. I, I would just stop complimenting. I just wouldn't do it. Why would I? No one wants to be put down. So I think, I think your, your topics, what, what you discussed here today is really interesting. Unfortunately, we're kind of running out of time. I'd love to have you come back again though, because there's a lot that I can see we can double I, here. I, and we've never, Never even talked yeah. about your bodybuilding. Yeah, no, I, I, you know what, what, what you just said. I'm, just, oh God, I, I have so much to say about what you said. First of all, I just, I credit you so much. First of all, this, this recent simp thing, and just how we've advanced so much with technology and how much we're we've regressed. Because if all these changes were actually healthy, we'd be more loving as a couple. We would not have more issues we would have less. So if we just look at in terms of a scientific experiment, it's not fucking working. All um, uh, when you talk about merging energies, and yes, um, that that's a he heavy topic uh, on itself that we can go on maybe next time. It, when you talk about conversation, it's about being authentic. Now, I there's something that I talk about, I think it would be very interesting to you, that you cannot be authentic if you're trained daily to be unauthentic. Example, how are you? Fine. Fine? What's fine? Fine stands for fucked up, insecure, nervous, and emotional. Why are you tell me fine? Will you slap on a label and that describes your whole entire being? Well, no, I don't actually want to tell you everything I'm going through. Yeah, but you don't develop the muscle that says to you, I'm conquering my issues. I'm blasting my obstacles. I'm loving this between us right now. When people are used to splitting, you know, uh, spitting out the word, how are you? And that at, instead of seeing a person like two animals, I'm not saying go snip their ass, but they, <laughs> they meet each other. And then they're like, hi, when you say hi, and you turn off your brain, you're in receptive mode, you get their energies. And then you could say, I'm feeling like you might be off about something is something bothering you. And the conversation is fucking authentic. But people are like, how are you? They're not even looking at your eyes anymore. And the other person is like, fine, because I've tried to t say it to people before how I am. And they just say, well, I didn't want to know all that. Or sometimes people say, how are you? And I haven't even formulated. And he's halfway down the, the block, like a random stranger. And I'm like, yo, yo, me. Yeah, you. I didn't give you my answer. Oh, no, it's just a question. I'm like, oh, you're doing your rhetorical thing? I don't do it on my time, okay? So now when people are like, how are you? I'm like, oh, I work on a need-to-know basis. Why? Do you need to know? Or if they're stupid people, how are you? I'm like, That's I'm purple. I'm purple. Or how are you? I'm interesting. You're interesting? Oh, I'm so fucking interesting. So the very first thing is That's we have awesome. to see. Thank you, love. And I want to encourage the young adults. And I gave them a whole list of things because when – if you only know how to say your bad shit or lie, you don't know how to get yourself forward. There is a power in a word when someone says, how are you? How are you feeling? Or how are you? And they really want to know. And it gives you a chance to say, I'm fucking blasting through everything. And that empowers you. And that empowers the other person. And guess what? Conversation isn't boring as fuck at that point because it's genuine. Do you know how many psychologists have conversations where they kind of like, uh, listening and then they take a deep sigh and, and they're like, okay, our time is up. You know why it's a tiring job? It's not a meeting of the mind because one guy's always talking and the, the therapist that's listening is not actually engaged in going through the force of your problem with you to be there with you because if he did, he'd be interested because it would be a first time experience. So there's all these little things that we're on autofill and I'm, I'm just trying to 
educates, and this is why I picked, because I've done seminars for adults, and believe me, there are a lot of, the, especially the women, are the hardest for me to break open, especially if they're older than me, and they start cocking their head to the left or through the right, and the arm folding business happen, and then I have to say what I say, and then the arms open, and they're like, oh my God, you're so right, but the young adults, they more like snap out of it. They're like, you're right. Why can't I say how? I can, I can. It doesn't matter if it's just how are you. If we are repeatedly saying something that is on automatic, we are keeping semi-frozen in a portion of our psyche, which means we can follow like sheep, whatever the media says. We're on auto. So the first thing I believe to do in what your brilliant analysis was on being authentic and not being judged for what happened 20 years ago and I understand compliments, people are fucking starving for it. And the fact that everything is labeled, first of all, labels get you in trouble. Oh, you're depressed. A young adult came to see me. That's what my doctor said, Nicole. I said, you're not depressed. You've just got you you just have an express shit that's locked inside. Yeah, that's true. Or some I had a, a a guy came up to me and he's like, "Oh, I'm fat." I'm like, "You're not fat. You're just off season, dude." And he goes, "Yeah, I'm just off season." Um it's all like labels just kill us because it's not detailed. It's general. Like if I give you general directions to get to my home, do you think you can get there? No, you need specific left here, right here to get to your goal. So I think the way society is going on, first of all, oh, I'm so grateful you told me about this. I, I, I swear I'm, I'm going to start tomorrow, book two, The Wisdom of the Penis Adjusted, just because you so inspired me. Because this simps business, <laughs> I cannot believe that they are. And you see, whoever's starting this, and believe me, someone is starting this. when. There are a few warriors left want to open the door who've been really like raised really, really well. And it's like, no, I want to keep my balls. I want to open a door. She's something special or whatever. And they call them simps. And even a simp, it sounds like a wimp. Do you understand how the, the melody is the same? Simp, wimp. That's why it doesn't matter that they put an S. They're meaning wimp. That's it. When you first said that word. Yeah. They mean wimp. It's it's not to be exalted. And so just like that they did with the whole feminism, did they look at a feminine divine energy for all the admire at all everything to admire about that and everything that regal bearing that we women hold? Did anybody teach young adults or women about this is what a woman is. No, they put a tank with a dress on it, marching down because that's what feminism is. Now, yes, do it with the cause, but you see our magic is inspiration. We inspire change. That's law of attraction. It's a passive magnetic energy. We're not being, we're now being forced to be forceful like men. How well does that fucking do shit? Not very well. So we're losing our ability for our magic, which is inspiration. And all these other things that are happening that are being funneled down. Like, look at a guy and his mommy issues. Like, it's all over the fucking place. And yeah, you blame the guy. You don't blame the guy, whatever. The point is the, the guy is being atrophied is nuts. But the thing, and yes, the mother's being selfish. And basically, he's a surrogate husband because the man she has in her life, she's no longer satisfied. But nobody looks at what makes the mother do that with the son. If all the women are being told to be in charge, it's going to put them in their head. And if it's going to put them in their head as a masculine energy, the son they're going to go for because masculine energy takes charge. So the woman is not in her feminine. It's an insult. A real woman would never chase a guy. Since when does a, a goddess chase a mere mortal? It doesn't fucking happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. these things are overlapping each other. So yeah, I've so enjoyed everything we're talking about. It, 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 I don't think we can do enough on this topic. I, I, no. I, and, and that's why what I'm aiming to do is just to bring, not just even, I want to start a whole romantic revolution in the sense of an <laughs> unapologetic romantic wake up call, like wake the fuck up, like girls unstrap 
your dick and give it back to your guy. And then he can act in the way you're bitching and complaining about because <laughs> you, you can't keep vacillating between a masculine energy and then a feminine on your period or when you're in a bad mood. It's not fair because he doesn't know whether to man up or back off. He's very exactly. confused and confusion breeds doubt. And that doubt is usually about ourselves. So why don't you tell the listeners where they can find you? Thank you. They could find me on NicoleColeman.com. And I have a whole bunch of really cool things. Like, I don't know if we could set this up on our next show. If we invite listeners to just send us a picture, I do face readings that are like bang on accurate. And especially if someone has an issue, if they send me one injury or one health issue with the problem in their life, I can then do a rant on that, especially if I get a picture of them. Um, I've designed a lot of different unique ways to get to issues because we've got like one people don't understand. Mike, do you have a favorite fairy tale? Because I, I can see you're in the era where there were fairy tales. So do you have like, have you always been pulled to a favorite hero or action or some kind of character or movie character? What was your favorite? Like that's always stayed with you as a kid up to now. Did you have one? Really? Not, not really. No. Okay. So you were your own hero. I like. So a lot of kids today have their favorite animated uh, character or, or anime or fairy, fairy tale character. And what I can do is that when you tell me a character that you have, and I'll give you an example. One of my clients, uh, his favorite thing was Popeye. And I said, okay, and uh, what's your problem? He goes, I'm always getting into trouble. I go, okay. So number one, I'll tell you right now, Goofus or Drufus, whatever Popeye's friend was, that <laughs> big guy was always up to no good. I said, so let me ask you something. You're pretty much a short guy. You're a lawyer and you're a short guy. So, you know, you grew up in a certain way, proving yourself. Do you have a big, strong guy around you at all times? That's always your closest friend. That's not really like kind of like he can not be that nice. He goes, yeah, and I'm a criminal lawyer. And yeah, I have that. And I said, well, that's that. And then you're olive oil. You're olive, the lady olive. So would you say your wife is very bitchy and naggy? Yes, you just read my whole life. And then I, and then I would just inform him on the parts from the fairy tale enables me to show where the characters are going to come into play, the theme of your life, where it's going, and the escape route. So a fairy tale, what I believe is ha they have a hidden key for us that unlocks the obstacles that we have. And I'll give you a fast example. I was always, and I don't know why, I don't know why you two, I was always pulled to the little match girl. Little match girl sits outside in the friggin' snow, freezing her ass off, selling the lights, the little matches. When she's about to die, she has a little match. And instead of warming herself up, she's selling up, out her light. This connected to me when I realized my whole life that whether I had energy or I had money or I didn't, I would give it to the last drop so that they could survive, so that they have my light, so they have my warmth. It didn't matter that I was in hell. It didn't matter I was isolated or didn't have anyone. I never shared that. And I never went to ask for help. Once I connected the two, it's like the spell was broken. And I no longer followed that path. So that is just something to think about if you, for your listeners, that if they'd like, they can send in, first of all, they can just send in an issue I'd love for us to tackle. Sure. But if they really want me to kind of zoom into them, a picture of them, an injury or a health uh, issue, you will send me the injury and the health issue ahead of time just so that I can focus on that. And then when I'm on the show again, I will let them know the subliminal thought that is hidden from them, that they don't know that they're thinking, that they were conditioned to think, or I don't know if you know about epige epigenetics, which is DNA kind of impregnation of a karmic or ancestral trauma brought to life at a certain time in your life here. So all these things enable us to extract the root of the problem. So if 
if they want, they can send uh, a health issue and an issue as a question and a picture. You can send Perfect. me that in advance and then we can go to town. Or a picture of a boss or a potential boyfriend, girlfriend, and we can do that randomly. Yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. So thank you so much for being on. We've loved having you here, but uh, we're all getting a little sleepy. So good night, everyone. Good night. And thank you for having me. Sorry, Mike, did you want to say something? I just close it with hasta la bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.